My name is Richard Jankiewicz. I am in charge of surgical department in St. Walburg Hospital in Nyangao in Tanzania. Uh, I am a specialist surgeon trained in Poland, uh, I was where I was working 18 years uh, in regional town hospital before I decided to come to Africa. I was working in short time also in Haiti and a little longer time in Nigeria. In 1991, I came to Tanzania and till now I'm still there working in my second hospital. My first hospital, it was uh, Ifakara in central part of the country, uh, connected with very active research uh, unit, Ifakara Center, some people probably hear about this. I was in charge of this hospital for years and uh, in charge of surgical department, which is very difficult to combine these uh, two functions. And then, since 1994, I came to Nyangao, which is, you see it as a, I have no experience with this light, you see. I don't think it works. Yeah, it works it's, it's not working, OK. It is on the corner uh, between. The top one, top one. This one, the top one. Good one, OK. Thank you. Uh, it is this black point near both of this mosaic and quite close to Indian Ocean, and also 500 kilometers to the capital town, Dar es Salaam. Uh, this is my hospital seen from very high level because it is satellite picture, it is 400 kilometers, but now with uh, actual technology is possible to see it. It is well built about 30 years ago. Uh, it is type of mission hospital. At this moment, uh, many mission hospitals start cooperation with government, uh, and we call it district designated hospital. Working in Tanzania for 23 years has given me rare opportunity to observe and the medical situation in the country to see changes, challenges, strengths, and weaknesses of the health sector, especially in the uh, surgical part. Uh, now it stopped. Okay. But I want to move slide. And okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, miss. I wanted to show this picture with our theater staff inside our hospital, which is somehow, as I say, well built, and this is quite uh, better construction than the neighbor hospitals around. Uh, when I learned about symposium, surgery in low resource settings, uh, I thought that it would be an excellent forum for me to share my long experience as a surgeon in Tanzania. And then I offer my participation in uh, this symposium. Uh, I got proposal from organizers uh, which suggested that it would be interesting to hear about the answer for question why should surgeons from Western countries work in low resource setting countries or why not? In my presentation, I will attempt to answer this a little controversial question. My answer, of course, is related to my experience in Tanzania, but I believe that similar situation arise in all Sub-Saharan Africa and other low resource settings countries. How is situation with surgeons in Tanzania? There is a great shortage of surgeons, and like in all neighboring countries, due to low number who are trained and to migration to out 
of the country, like to countries like South Africa, Botswana, and Western countries. The distribution of surgeons within the country is unequal. The majority of surgeons in Tanzania are located in larger centers like Dar es Salaam, Moshi, Mwan, Zambeya. In our region, Lindi and neighboring Mtuara in south of Tanzania, uh, with over two million people, there is no single Tanzanian surgeon. Moreover, no effective effort has been made to recruit or to distribute surgeons in our rural area. Interesting data was recently published in East African Journal of Surgery, uh, showing situation with uh, medical officers, medical doctors who graduate in decade between 2001 and 2010. The blue color, blue columns, this is number of doctors and red surgeons. Doctors during these 10 years uh, graduate a little more than 2,000, and we see what is positive that this, this line is uh, growing, is going up. The surgeons also, but not so impressive. And the surgeons totally was 50 during this time which count about 2.5% of all doctors who graduate. The question is how many of them remain in the country? Who is performing surgery in Tanzania? Uh, the most, of most of surgery are performed by the assistant medical officer. We hear about in other countries, they call them clinical officers. In Tanzania, we have, we have also three uh, clinical officers. After three years study, later they must come back to hospital and to work three years. And after this, they have chance to go to continue study and to become assistant medical officers. And totally, they have five years study and uh, but still is very difficult to compare the, the knowledge, uh, what they have with uh, normal study, university study in Europe. On the other side, they represent a lot of practical uh, knowledge, which is sometimes helpful for people coming to the country. They are working in district, mission and re regional hospitals, which are more than 200 in this country with population near 47 millions and performing more of surgical procedures. Most of them are able to perform cesarean section, ectopic pregnancy, adnexectomy, hernia repair, limb amputation, and others. The AMOs are sponsored by the hospitals and obliged to return after training to own hospitals. The training is not recognized out, outside of the country, so they are not lost out migration. Some AMOs, they receive higher level of surgical knowledge through different circumstances and experiences and rather not from standard courses. These officers are able to perform hysterectomies, basic bowel and stomach operations and internal or external bone fixation. Provisions should be made for those AMOs who are interested in gaining greater surgical skills to have opportunity to do so rather than by favorable circumstances or chance. What type of surgeons are coming to Tanzania from abroad? This is there is a few groups organize short-term visiting groups or individuals offering specialized services like plastic surgery, car cardiovascular, and others. Usually, they are coming to larger medical centers. Personal short-term visits for one or two months by surgeons with a connection to mission phase based hospitals like ECMC, Moshi, Peramion, Danta Hospital, or Haidon. Often, they are retired. Young doctors, sent by VSO, AGH, or other NGOs, 
after short surgical training, usually connected with specialization in tropical medicine. Designated surgeons from Western teaching hospitals and institutions sent to training centers and medical facilities for limited time periods. Individuals like me, surgeons who work in Tanzania for a long period of time and not belonging to above mentioned group, a great exception. Now it's time to answer for the main question, uh, which is title of my presentation. Why should surgeons from Western countries come to work in low resource setting countries? The main reason is great shortage of surgeons due to above mentioned factors and the fact that governments are not able to change situation in short time. They are badly needed, but they need to be dedicated and aware of constraints and sacrifices to be faced. They should also be aware that even those few enthusiasts from Western countries who choose to work in low resource setting countries for longer periods of time will not be able to change the general situation. Working in low resource setting countries is giving an occasion to practice and enhance surgical skills. General surgeons can gain additional experience and broaden the surgical skill set into areas such as gynecology, obstetrics, urology, orthopedics, and others. On the other hand, it's necessary to be aware that taking such a path is just the opposite from trend in developed countries to becoming more specialized. Even experienced surgeon needs not less than one year working in low resource setting countries to feel comfortable with different cases in different circumstances. This slide is showing, uh, it is illustration what uh, surgeons should, must be able to do in, in typical uh, district or mission hospital. Uh, it is from my hospital uh, statistic for last year. It was uh, over 1,700 operations. Uh, some of them a little more specialized, like thyroidectomy, uh, sometimes single thoracotomy. Uh, such operations like appendectomy or cholecystectomy are still in our area are extremely rare. Uh, but on the other side is very fast growing group of operations with bone operations, uh, external fixation, internal fixation, and also for osteomyelitis. And of course, the leading number, the number one in this list is cesarean section, like in almost all this type of hospitals. Now, the second part of the question, why they shouldn't come? There is possibility of loss and opportunity to advance in surgical profession. If a surgeon from developed country decides to work in low resource setting country, it usually results in difficult situation because it is often impossible to return to the same place or position at later dates. There is a greater danger to life and health from traffic accidents, tropical diseases, animals, and other factors. For families, it can be difficult because of lack of good schools and limited social and cultural life. The everyday difficulties arising from shortages of almost everything, instruments, surgical supplies, medicaments, staff, as well as interruptions in services such as electricity and water supply. Deciding to come and work in Africa is a task for dedicated and healthy people who are both physically and emotionally strong. Working in different climates, in very different living and social conditions, is not for everyone. From my observation, the first few months are the most difficult and it seems that problems that are small 
in one's own country can become very large in different environment. This can lead to frustration and even depression causing people to leave before the end of their contract. I have seen many of such cases. And the surgeon from Europe, from Western countries, should have kind of reason to stay long time. And this, this, this motivation reason is very often satisfaction from work. I'm showing a few examples. We call this case uh, patient of the year. Usually we are choosing most interesting or unusual case and preparing uh, annual statistic. Sometimes we are using this description. This woman came with extremely um, bad situation, unconscious, uh, with contusion of the head, concussion of brain, uh, contusion of chest and lungs, multiple fractures of limbs, and after several weeks, first she gained consciousness, and after several weeks she was able to walk on crutches, and finally, she left the hospital on her own legs, which was giving us enormous satisfaction. Another case. It is a patient who was beaten in the face by Hain. It was looking, he was in general in very poor condition, losing a lot of blood, infection. But on the end, it was possible to help him and to send him home, unfortunately with only one eye was able to walk and able to perform basic work. And the last example, child who came to hospital uh, with suffocation. She was not able to breathe, she was dying. And it was not very clear, mother said she ate fish. But if she ate fish, why she couldn't breathe? Finally, we diagnosed her and removed these fish bones from trachea. How they came to trachea is difficult. Probably she was or vomiting or kind of inspiration. And, but after removal, she became very soon, uh, her condition changed and she was discharged with, in general, a very good condition. Conclusion. In Tanzania, like in most low resource setting countries, there is a great shortage of surgeons, especially in rural areas. Every regional hospital in Tanzania should have a specialist surgeon, and every district or mission hospital at least one AMO well trained in surgery. Surgeons from Western countries can help on many ways if they are in uh, low resource setting countries, but they can't change general situation. Real change can be done by local authorities implementing effective training system, economic incentives, and administrative decisions, including proper distribution of surgeons. And all, on the end, fighting with all these constraints, problems, which are plenty every day, the final award of our attempts is happy smile of cured patient. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Yankovic. I told you that if anybody knew why Western doctors should come, then nobody else but him. His balance sheet to come to the uh, low resource area, you must be dedicated, you must be healthy, and you must have a sense of humanitarian reason. That is his balance sheet. He has showed us all the differences, why you should and why you shouldn't, the benefits you get, and the fact that it is at the peril of your family life and at your own life. But then, you know, everybody will want to be thought of as being emotionally strong, dedicated, and healthy. So please, if you are healthy, dedicated, and emotionally strong, 
come to us and help us, please. Okay. Let's have any questions. Questions, contributions to this beautiful presentation. Okay, I, I want to just ask a question. We have one question here in the... Okay, good. Did I the go ask I'll go, I'll go. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jankovic, for the presentation, um, which was focused indeed on people who stay long-term, surgeons who stay long-term in Africa, um, which is a good thing because those people are dedicated who stay for really long-term in Africa. My question is actually like many people, surgeons, but also tropical doctors come for shorter terms, like one year, two year. Um, how useful is that in your view? It's actually a question because I, I thought you were focusing more on the long term, but many of, and it was also emphasized in the previous presentation, like if you go to Africa, you can come back and it's still recognized in the Netherlands. But isn't the need more for the people who really are dedicated and stay for long term? Thank you for your question. Uh, it's difficult. I said at the beginning it is controversial question, and controversial question it means it's difficult to answer clear, and it's not one answer, because I think it is like, like a container with water, and you can fill container by putting all at once, or sometimes by small drops. And I think this doctors coming to Africa, as I presented different groups, all of them, they're helping to fill this, this container with knowledge, with experience, with many, many things. We, we have surgeons, we have interns, quite a lot from Holland during past years. Now we have nurses. And actually we have nurses also and one doctor from, from Holland. All of them, they are bringing something to the hospital. And we, we are happy to have them. And, you know, it is not something visible that you can see, but somebody who is so long time like me, uh, we see this positive effect of contact, local doctors, local staff with people from abroad presenting another knowledge, another experience. And this is giving positive effect. Then I strongly support idea doctors who want to come to Africa, but I warn it is not, <laughs> not easy job and they must consider many sacrifices. Yes, that's the answer. Any other contribution? Yes. Thank you. I'm Robert Peschel from Germany. Um, of course, we all have uh, the obligation or the ethical and humanitarian obligation to help. But nevertheless, we have to go back to the first presentation of the Congress. Uh, we have to come back to the political agenda. That we want, we, Of course, we do something good to the individual. But there is no change if I look back. I've worked in Malawi in 82, 87. And actually, we talked for the past 32 years, we talk at every meeting the same problems. We talk about the same problems. We need this. And there's a, uh, we have no, not enough manpower. We really have to come back to the political question, and I, I maybe, I don't know if you have read Tamisa Moyo, Dead Aid. And we really have to think about it, that probably we harm more than we do good if we don't put it on the political agenda. And I still think that that's the only way that we can improve. If it goes to the political decision makers that we force them somehow, and I think there is a good way now with the WHO program and as well as uh, uh, what was presented in the video that it has to come up to a political decision that we, we force the elite to change the way. Uh, it's not a question if I go as a surgeon and anesthetist to Africa or not. That's not the question. Of course, if I go, I might help or might not. But uh, uh, if you have no political change then we will, in 30 years, we will have a meeting of the same topic, 
and we will have the same problems as we have faced the past 30 years. Just a, as a provocative, <coughs> provocative statement, not to, uh, not to uh, say I don't value the work we all of us have done. And of course, I have also done work, and probably maybe I see it more critically, that I have moved, I have helped people, individuals, but I haven't changed anything for the, for the whole population. Just as a comment. I think it's going to be disappointing for you, but I don't think politics is going to change. No matter how much pressure we try to, uh, to put on them through WHO or any other. So in the end, it comes down to individuals deciding to do, do the work. And, in the, and I think that is what uh, will help the patients who otherwise do not get treated. But I don't think politics is going to solve the problems. They have other interests, other agendas, unfortunately. Yes, it is a little risky to mix politics with medicine. But of course, all of us, we are observing, uh, doctors, we are observing situation on medical field, but also some of us interested in politics. Uh, from my experience, I can say it is not easy subject because I think Western countries, due to economical position, science and, and, and but especially economical situation, supporting many projects, they have strong tool in the hands to influence governments, Ministry of Health, to provide proper policy in health sector. How they are using it is difficult to say. <clears throat> I see many, many controversial situations, projects. For example, I give you one <clears throat> we are in rural place, bush, and then we hear that 30 kilometers from us, World Bank is building super laboratory for $700,000. If they build, and they are starting building, who will utilize this test? They have plan. we must build laboratory here and here and here in Africa. They choose this place. But they are not thinking that even if they will be able to produce sophisticated laboratory tests, there will be nobody who properly utilized these tests. And I have many, many similar examples, which is not subject of my presentation, but it is, it is reality. But using properly this economical power and influence and, and many other things, I think Western countries can influence proper, can demand proper policy. Uh, from from Minister of Health, as we hear somewhere that they are not reacting, there is, there is not proper um, health policy. I believe there is strong tool, but the problem is that even these countries, they sometimes, they making such decisions that it's difficult to understand for somebody who is sitting in the middle of the bush and seeing how they're spending money. Uh, not all, of course, such projects, uh, but uh, as I said, I gave one example. Well, Dr. Jankovic, uh, thank you very much.